In 1966, Yoko Ono devised a chess set called Play It By Trust. It uses 32 standard chess pieces and an 8x8 square board. What was unusual about it? There Ooh. are so many chess variants. There are. But so it's many. Yoko Ono's version. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Like it feels like it, it's Yoko Ono. It, it feels like the, like the point is is the point that it's like a, 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 an an art display effectively. Like this is a, a form of modern art of performance art in the form of chess. Uh, having it called like play it by trust. Yeah, you're you're quick. I I feel like Yoko Ono would not be designing a commercially copyrighted version <laughs> yeah, of chess yeah, here. That is going to get not pitching it to Hasbro. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I like that though. And there's Hasbro just has a, a board with like Yoko Ono's face on it and a big, big production site. It just it, it's just a regular chess set, but it's Yoko Ono's chess set. So the chess. Yeah, yeah. It's the it's the stepping stone to Parker Brothers doing Yoko Onopoly. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the brief pause before there as you tried to work out which O's were getting put. Where do the there. O's go? <laughs> Yo, Yokopoly? No, Yokonopoly? No, maybe. Yo Yokonopoly? <laughs> well, if you've got to play it by trust, to me, my first instinct is, for whatever reason, you can't see everything. And you just got to like mm. trust that the other person is being honest about what's going on. You're playing chess battleship of some sort is how I'm picturing it. <gasps> Oh, I saw it like the old, um, you remember Command and Conquer, the video game, kind of real-time mm -hmm. strategy game where you didn't see the opponent's section of the board until like, you had a sight line there? Mm. You're in the right direction. Oh, really? <laughs> You're not there yet. Okay. Was the okay. board, Did you... like, we said that it was a normal 8x8 eight eight board. Was it definitely, was it in one piece, this board? <laughs> yeah, it's a normal board with all okay. the, the norm, with all the, the um, pieces are standard. Did you see the chat GPT playing chess thing? No. Um, well, no. Is it terrible or amazing? Uh, so this is going to date very badly because in six months it'll probably be able to do this. But it, all it's doing <laughs> is like predicting what the next word is. So it sort of knows how chess games work and sort of knows where the pieces might be. But it doesn't understand the rules. So it just cheats all the time. <laughs> Because all it's doing is going, that looks like a move someone would write there. I'll try that. Uh, what have you done? You've taken your own bishop. Well, I guess that's a thing you can do now. <laughs> <laughs> but he's mine now. I've kept him safe. Okay, so it's something trust-based. It's got to be about knowledge or something hidden, but... Mm. Ooh, I've got a cool idea. I have no idea if this is in any way related, but now I want to play mm. it. What if okay. you, your king is in disguise? As another piece. I mean, I know you said that it's all of the normal pieces, but what if your king, king might not be your king? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> and that by be a trust, great you just game? you just have to declare at some point. Oh, yeah, no, that that's not actually my king. Yeah. It's actually oh, this that one. wasn't my king. <laughs> yeah, then you got to just trust they're telling the truth. My my question was: Is it a two player game, or are there three, four more people playing? It's a two player game. Ah, if I was coming up with a thing that was about trust, I would say that. One person, no, that doesn't make sense. I was like, one person is just making the moves in their head, but that doesn't make any sense. Plus, like, that's that's a game for some chess grandmasters is just to entirely keep the board in their head and and bounce things back and forth. You're in the right line. Okay, with the head, oh, you it, know, you have to yeah. memorize a little bit. Yeah, are the are the pieces? You said they were standard pieces. Are they actually on the board moving around? Yes, they are. Okay, okay, interesting. Are they, this, this sounds like the sort of very late 1960s, extremely ham-fisted metaphor for what's going on in the world. Are the pieces all the same colour so they're not black and white? <gasps> yes. <gasps> You're so oh. good. I'm impressed. <laughs> Yeah, they're that all white. That feels like exactly the sort of things that, they, oh, they went with all white. That is, <laughs> I would have gone, I would have gone with shades of grey, personally. It, it's but, 1966, uh, yeah. so I guess, okay. uh, because it's to show the, the futility of war. Oh, mm, yeah. Yeah, and you have to, you ha that, because after a couple of, of plays, you don't remember which are yours and which are the opponents, so you have to trust the other, so... Yeah. But if you if you did it now and you did make them all white, oh, Twitter would be onto you straight away. <laughs> <laughs> the answer was making a statement against war, 
Whereas my first instinct was, oh, let's combine chess with battleship. Let's double the war. <laughs> let's make it two wars at once. We're going to fight this war on multiple fronts. <laughs> your, your king has been checked by uh, an aircraft carrier. Okay, that's, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, so both players start with a full complement of 16 white chess pieces. While it's possible to start a game in the usual manner, it becomes harder to remember which piece belongs to which player. The artwork created in 1966 is symbolic of the futility of war. 